Glasgow, which is located on the River Clyde, has evolved from an industrial metropolis to Scotland's most populated city, courtesy of its top-notch museums, art galleries, concert halls, and festivals. Its Gaelic name, meaning the Deer Green Place, is appropriate, given its countless parks and recreational areas. Glasgow expanded from a small rural community to become Scotland's largest seaport and the 10th largest in all of Britain. Expanding from the Royal Bura and medieval bishopric, Glasgow, later established the University of Glasgow in the 15th century, and in the 18th century, it became a significant hub of the Scottish Enlightenment. Here's a look at the best places to visit while in Glasgow. Number 1. Kelvin Grove Art Gallery and Museum. Established in 1901, the Kelvin Grove Art Gallery and Museum is one of Glasgow's most well-known landmarks. Located on Argyle Street, the museum, which has 22 rooms and more than 8,000 objects on show, is housed in a Spanish Baroque structure. These objects include furniture, paintings, sculptures, and weapons from the 20th century. History aficionados can find a fantastic collection of British and foreign paintings in this museum. Additionally, there is a French gallery nearby that exhibits works of art, such as Van Gogh's portrait of the Glaswegian art collector, Alexander Reed, and Salvador Dali's Christ of St. John of the Cross. Number 2. Riverside Museum. Formerly known as the Glasgow Museum of Transport, the Riverside Museum opened in June 2011, winning the 2013 European Museum of the Year Award. There are depictions of all types of transportation, including toy automobiles and prams, as well as fire trucks and horse-drawn carriages, motorcycles, and caravans. The Clyde Room also exhibits around 250 ship models. While you are at the museum, visit the tall ship, Glenlee, to step back in time and experience what life was like on the open seas. Explore the ship's depths, stop by the galley, and ring the bell. Number 3. Necropolis. The name derives from ancient Greece, literally meaning, City of the Dead. It is a 37-acre, Victorian garden cemetery, built in the classical revival architectural style. The Merchant's House of Glasgow founded the Necropolis in 1831. There are thought to have been 50,000 graves here, with about 3,500 tombs, in addition to sculptures and structures made by artisans from Glasgow. Number 4. The Lighthouse. The Lighthouse, Scotland's Centre for Design and Architecture, is a visitor centre, exhibition space and events venue, situated in the heart of Glasgow. The Lighthouse serves as a guiding light for Scotland's creative industries and promotes design and architecture through a busy calendar of exhibitions and events. You can use the spiral staircase in the Macintosh Centre from Level 3, taking you to the outdoor viewing platform, giving you one of the greatest views of the entire city. Number 5. Glasgow Science Centre. The Glasgow Science Centre is a must-see attraction for families seeking a fun way to spend time together. This attraction is situated in the waterfront area and is housed in a suitably distinctive titanium-clad building that is shaped like a ship's hull. It offers spectacular views of the surrounding city and is said to be the tallest freely rotating building in the world. Among the highlights are innovations in general science and modern technology. Additionally, there are various stations set up like laboratories where kids can conduct some scientific experiments. The planetarium, an IMAX cinema, and a science theater are all worth a visit. Number 6. Glasgow Cathedral. The oldest structure in Glasgow and the largest house of worship in Scotland, Glasgow Cathedral was constructed in the 12th century. Its past reveals various Christian identities. The cathedral is dedicated to Saint Mungo, a Celtic missionary to Scotland, who lived in the 6th century and whose grave was once a popular pilgrimage site. His tomb is located in the center of the building's lower church. Number 7. Glasgow Botanic Gardens. The west end of Glasgow is home to Glasgow Botanic Gardens. 
It has multiple glass houses, the most renowned being the Kibble Palace. The Kibble Palace was first utilized as an exhibition and performance venue, before being used for growing plants, starting in the 1880s. Built in 1873, it is one of Britain's largest glass houses, and home to a collection of rare orchids. The main plant group is the collection of New Zealand and Australian tree ferns, some of which have lived here for 120 years. Number 8. Ashton Lane. With those recognizable fairy lights suspended above you, Glasgow's West End's adorable cobbled lane is pretty magical. Even though it is only a short street, you can access it from either Byers Road or University Avenue. There are plenty of things to do here, from drinking beers to taking in street art. Since 1971, Glasgow's ubiquitous chip restaurant has been a favorite among foodies. On their lovely rooftop, you can eat traditional Scottish dishes, like venison haggis and Shetland mussels. Number 9. Bothwell Castle. Bothwell Castle is located about 10 miles southeast of Glasgow, in between Bothwell and Uddingston. The Clan Murray's forefathers started building the fortress in the 13th century to protect a strategic, Clyde Crossing. Bothwell, which changed hands numerous times, was crucial to Scotland's efforts for independence. Although the enormous cylindrical tower was constructed in the 13th century, it was severely damaged during several sieges before the rest of the castle was finished. The castle was further enlarged in the early 15th century. Number 10. Glasgow Green. Established in the 15th century, Glasgow Green, by far the city's oldest park, is conveniently located in the city's center. The People's Palace, which was founded in 1898, is one of the park's most prominent features and is a museum that chronicles Glasgow's history from 1750 to the present day. Number 11. Pollock House and Country Park. The grounds of Pollock House extend across an area of 355 acres and are located about four miles southwest of Glasgow's city center. This Edwardian mansion, belonging to the Maxwell family was constructed in 1752 by William Adam and his sons. Explore Pollock House's upper floors for a fascinating insight into the upper-class Edwardian lifestyle. Number 12. George Square. Initially laid out in 1781 and named after King George III, George Square lies at the heart of Glasgow's historic Victorian city center. The square is decorated with 12 statues of notable historical figures connected to the city, including Sir Walter Scott, Sir Robert Peel, and Queen Victoria. This is the city's main square and is a beautiful one indeed. From here, a lot of tourists begin their walking tour. This is a must-see when visiting Glasgow. Number 13. The Gallery of Modern Art. The Gallery of Modern Art, or GOMA for short, was established in 1996 and is located in a neoclassical building in Glasgow's Royal Exchange Square in the heart of Glasgow's city centre. GOMA houses four galleries, a library, and a gallery shop, where products based on the collection are sold. Works of art from all over the world are on display here. Open from Monday through Saturday, the Goma Cafe offers a variety of hot and cold beverages, sandwiches, and snacks. Number 14. Ovio Hydro. Formerly called the SSE Hydro, it is a multi-purpose indoor arena, located within the Scottish Event Campus, in Glasgow, and is the largest entertainment venue in Scotland. Having a maximum capacity of 14,300, the OVO Hydro showcases international musical artists, world entertainment, and sporting events. The arena sponsor's aim is to draw in 1 million visitors each year. Number 15. University of Glasgow. A Glasgow-based public research university, it is the fourth oldest university in the British world and one of Scotland's four ancient universities. Established in 1451, the university, along with those at Edinburgh, Aberdeen, and St. Andrews, participated in the Scottish Enlightenment in the 18th century. 
Glasgow initially educated students, primarily from wealthy backgrounds, similar to universities of the pre-modern era. However, in the 19th century, it became a pioneer in British higher education, by also meeting the needs of students, from the expanding urban and commercial middle class.